Hey guys, welcome to our sixth and final episode of our Pacific Crossing series. We give you a detailed look into our final 24 hours at sea and show the routine that we had gotten into after 19 days on the open ocean. Watch until the end where the crew are literally brought to tears by the beauty that is Fatu Iva in the Marquesas Islands. And we also do a final recap of some of the stats from this adventure of a lifetime. So I'm Colin. And this is the crew of Pale Revive. From hurricane damaged to broken bulkheads and getting struck by lightning not once but twice to being the strongest and fastest Lagoon 450 on the planet. We are now ready to embark on a 3,000 mile journey across the Pacific Ocean to French Polynesia before continuing on with our circumnavigation. So subscribe to follow our journey around this beautiful planet. 20 years from now, you'll be more disappointed by the things you didn't do than by the things you did. So what are you waiting for? Chosen, last day. It is. I'm looking forward to getting there. Not looking forward to the trip being over. Every single morning, I check all the fresh veggies. So the red cabbage still looks pretty good. Lots of lime. So I just, yeah, just have a good thorough check because a lot of the ones that did um, go moldy were usually like the ones that were like down at the bottom in the corner with all the others on top of them. Potatoes! And they're doing great. So we just bring them up because most days we actually do eat potatoes. So these I really like have to check each one because some of them get um, a little soft and kind of gross. Um, all the way in the back, um, but yeah. You hungry? He's licking his lips already. So this one's Lindo's, he eats really, really fast. So this one slows him down, don't think he likes it much. He's just started drooling. Okay, each of Now this is probably the most common question we've gotten over the last few years. Where do the dogs do their business? They say the grass is greener where you water it. <laughs> yeah, this is the only patch that's green, huh? Well, here you have it, the dog man. We didn't even need to train them to go on it. They just started doing it on their own. We carry a whole roll of the stuff, so we swap it out when it gets a little too smelly, but flushing it with salt water multiple times a day keeps it pretty clean. So after the dogs have eaten, we start to think about what the crew will eat. Because there are eight of us, each meal has to be planned out pretty carefully. But as it's our last full day at sea, we're just trying to use up all the odds and ends of our produce before it goes bad. Our last supper at sea is going to be ceviche. This is fresh wahoo from yesterday. These last us 20 days. I'm not sure if you really put this kind of stuff in, but this is what we have left because it's the last day. If you've never had ceviche before, it is raw fish that is actually cooked in the lime juice, which we like to leave marinating for a few hours. So it's best to prepare it in the morning. So in case you guys are wondering what we do on a watch, around these areas we're particularly looking out for squalls. In the daytime you can normally see them, but to track them, um, one really, really useful instrument we have is the radar. So a radar will pick up any rain, and rain is usually associated with a lot of wind out here. It's called a squall. So we track them, see where they're going, if they're going to cross in front of us, behind us, or come at us. If they're going to come towards us, we obviously change our course. Sometimes we can't change our course and it's just coming straight for us. We'll reduce the sail area. We're also looking out for other boats, but we've seen, what, one boat? This entire crossing, and it was way off in the distance. Cargo ship. Um, and making sure that we're on course. So we all do two hour watches and then six hours off. So now I'm going to do a handover to Colleen and um, Chosen. Right now you are on a wind vane setting of 110 degrees on your port side. Mm -hmm. It's pretty much keeping us bang on track for the last two hours. The sea state is getting a little bit calmer than it was when I first got on. But the wind has dropped as well. So with the drop in sea state, there's been a drop in, drop in wind. We were doing eight, nine knots when I first came out. Now we're doing seven. We have 70 three miles to go till we turn around the Fatu Eva. So that's what we do on a watch and that's what we do on a handover. All yours.
Oh, there's a boat. So that ring, that ring there is 25 miles, so it's maybe like 12 miles. Okay, then it's usually time for a bit of breakfast. Um, we usually go with some oats, maybe. Really easy to cook. We can cook lots for everybody. But we've got three and a half trays of eggs left, and they're probably going to go rotten soon. So I'll probably just do some scrambled eggs and some sausages. Not often you'll find me in the galley. I kind of try to stay out of it. There's too many good chefs on here. But uh, we'll make an exception for today. Because the um, eggs are possibly turning on us, I'm going to crack each one individually into a cup before I put them in with the rest. Because one bad egg can spoil the whole lot and we lose 12 eggs. It's been 19 days since we bought these. They haven't been refrigerated. By the way, we've been running a little bit low on power. It's been quite overcast the last week. So I'm gonna cook half on the induction and half with gas. So I just turned on the radar and um, some clouds are showing up. And um, when they show up like this, as you can see, they show up red. So that means they're coming towards us and it means that they have activity in them or energy so there's rain in them that one is the is this one the one down here is the one behind us it's kind of tough though because you can't tell how much wind is in each of them so i've been dreaming about this for so long and feel like i've kind of um planned my life around this for a couple years now so it's kind of a bittersweet feeling that it's coming to an end. I don't know, a little bit of anxiety for like, okay, now what's my next dream? What's my next goal? That smells delicious. David pretends he's sleeping, but then he wakes up as soon as someone's cooking huh? something in the kitchen. Hey, I've lost at least six pounds on this trip. We can't weigh ourselves. No, no, how? Because I've been starving myself. <laughs> like a high school Have girl. Not. He had a sandwich with potatoes in it the other day. Carbs on carbs. Chosen? I uh, just want to see it. That's four miles away. Looks, appears to be on a collision course with us. Oh, cool, that'll be exciting. Yeah, I just didn't know whether you wanted to <laughs> douse the code D or not. Well, I think we'll just wait till the last minute and then okay. just go into a mad panic. <laughs> it's all about laughing. Whose laugh is better, yours, Collins, or Jamie's? Jamie's is the best, hands down. Who am I? <laughs> <laughs> Bit of egg, sausage. Look at that goodness. What's he going with? Ooh, tea sauce. Yeah, baby. Ketchup. Yeah. That's good. Put some curry powder in the eggs. Oh, is that it but in all seriousness, we are keeping an eye on the score behind us. Kind of a dark cloud, a lot of rain in there. Coming straight up our backside. So we're joking around, but we do need to watch that. It could be 10 knots apparent right now and just go up to bang, 30 knots. So, definitely don't want the code D up when if that happens. So just keeping a close eye on it here. And of course, with eight crew all eating three meals a day, we have to do a lot of dishes. The way we do it on Parlay is with a salt water sink for washing, then a fresh water sink for rinsing, which we've found to be the most efficient way not to use up our fresh water supplies too badly. We do have a Seawater Pro water maker, which makes 42 gallons of water per hour, but that uses a thousand watts of power when running so we still try to conserve water as much as we can. Oh yeah, and our rule on Parlay is that whoever cooks doesn't do the dishes, so some people end up cleaning a lot more than others. What are you doing now? So then normally sit down and do some editing. So I normally do all of the work episodes and uh, Britt does all the rest. I get a little bit seasick when I'm editing. Maybe it's sitting this way. I haven't tried sitting there yet. This is fine, but if it's rough, I get really queasy, so it's hard to get the edit out, but she's got an iron stomach, and she can uh, she can edit through a tsunami. I feel like I've seen her editing where like the laptop is lifting off of the table and then coming back down, and she's just still chugging away at it. What's your secret? How do you do it? I can't explain it. You're just, it's either you could do it or you can't do it. It's like physiology. It's like a roller coaster. If you go on a roller coaster, do you get sick or don't you get sick? There's no, no secret to not getting sick. It's not either you, you get sick or you don't get sick. It's funny how if you do something long enough, it becomes routine. It's been a month and it feels like this is normal life. I mean, it's far from normal, but in the beginning it was tough, but now it's sort of become routine. And I almost can't imagine seeing land. This is a good subject, seasickness. 
I I get seasick when I'm on a super yacht in an engine room and I smell diesel. Like it just triggers something in me. But it's mental because if I, if I stop thinking about the fact that I'm gonna get seasick, I'll be fine. And then I'll realize, shit, I've been down here for an hour and I haven't gotten seasick and I can smell diesel. But the minute I think, oh, that diesel's gonna make me feel sick, I get sick and I even throw up. Um, so it's, seasickness is so mental. What's that sound? <laughs> One of my many alarms. <laughs> time for watch, buddy. What? It's watch time for you guys already? This is getting old, eh? <laughs> Quite tired at the moment. I know we're going to get a bit of backlash about eight people being on board and how easy it is with watches and that. Um, single hand of sailor, like I've got full respect for you guys. Um, but Parlay has been built like for a community of people, so we want to bring everyone along the long on the journey. All right. So also every every day I do a log at midday. Stephen at the end of his shift, he gives me the overall distance we have travelled. So today it is two seven eight eight. 2,788 nautical miles since Puerto Vallarta. That is one hell of an accomplishment. 19 days at sea and counting. And then I put the lat long in. So, so a quick bit of maths, 2788 minus 2646 is 142 miles in the last 24 hours. It's because we had not much wind at all last night. Right now there's an easterly, easterly wind at about force four. You have to tap the barometer, see it just went up one. So now we're at 10. All right, so the pressure's coming down. Usually lower pressures means worse weather. So we started this trip in Puerto Vallarta at about 10.16. Now we're at 10.08. Let's go check in with Stephen McLeod. I just got off my, my uh, watch, doing a little post. Um, this one's going to be King Neptune's amusement. I think we may have pissed off the king a little bit by nonchalantly swimming across the equator. For his amusement and to quell some of our cockiness about our accomplishment, he's decided to chuck a line of squalls in our path. As I said previously, he's a devious prick. We are approximately 60 nautical miles from land, and since the land mass extends up to about 3,000 feet, I expect to start getting a view of it at about 40 miles, if the horizon is clear. I have heard of people being able to smell land before it can be seen, however the king has seen fit to place the island downwind of us, so we will see. The clock is ticking and while we were all anxious to get there, none of us want this adventure to end. We'll talk soon. Stephen. So this, this link goes to all of our patrons and uh, they're all checking multiple times a day, so do you feel a bit of pressure to uh, do a post for them? Not really pressure, but I want to do, because I know what I would be like, yeah. I'm doing this based on what I would like to see when I'm following somebody. I'm having a blast doing my little posts that I, I do, try to do a couple times a day. Um, didn't think I would at first, but uh, yeah, it's been fun. Uh, try to keep them interesting and maybe a little bit funny if I can, but I'm not that funny naturally, so I have to think about it a bit. But uh, every once in a while something happens that is post-worthy, I guess. It's a really cool app. The, uh, it's with Predict Wind. He uses the offshore app. He's just logged in under our account. And uh, he can put in photos and stuff like that. And he set the bar pretty high because now all the patrons are tuning in closely. Once Stephen leaves, whenever that may be, someone's going to have to, I'll, pro I'll probably have to do it, step in and keep everyone notified because they just love seeing where we are in real time because the YouTube is a couple of months behind real time. But this is happening right here, right now. Patrons can even see the exact wind strength and the wind direction at the time of the posting. So, super cool stuff. Predict wind tracking. Ceviche, baby! Did you cook this one? What are you rushing to? I'm late for watch. Oh. I'm going. I'm going. Katie narked on you. Classic F and Katie. Classic Katie. We began this amazing Pacific passage with a narc telling on me. The first day, I just shut my eye just for a second. I was just, just 
wanted to see what the back of my eyelids looked like and she goes and takes a video and narks on me and now she's narking on me again. On, on watch number 58, she's narking on me. I feel like I've learned a lot on this trip. You know, it started off being pretty tough. I was super anxious, wanting to get there. Not that I wasn't enjoying all of this, 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 everything, this has been a dream. It's been amazing, but I still wanted to get to my destination. But some, somewhere along this trip, I guess I started seeing things a little bit differently. And I started getting more in the moment. And I don't know. I don't know how to describe it, but I kind of don't want all this to end now. What's it like being a single watch partner? <laughs> Normal. <laughs> and it feels like it just flew by and wasn't long enough, you know? Uh, pleasurable things in life are always, always uh, go by quicker than the hard things, it seems like. And so it's kind of bittersweet that it's coming to an end because I, um, I don't, I haven't quite put those feelings together on how I'm gonna navigate through that and kind of settle back into my, my normal life. How far away are we charging? We are about 34 and a half miles. There she is. Pop to eat. Who's excited? Lindo's eating Lindo. it. Lindo. Show she leg. Lindo. Lindo, Lindo. no. What did you do? <laughs> I sat, I sat down and I look up and there's like brown stuff all over the chair. <laughs> and then I got nervous. I was like, what is it? <laughs> it's like, what have I done? Here, take this. Ew, mm, gross. Chocolate. You never really tend to regret doing the things that scare you the most um, because they really do tend to be the most rewarding and I had never even <laughs> sailed before <laughs> and now this is day 19 I think of the biggest passage that's possible in the world so yeah always step outside of your comfort zone when you can um, and yeah follow your dreams. <laughs> we got a smoke show. Well, they're gonna cook really fast. They're about a quarter of an inch thick, so. <laughs> you ever had a barbecue in the middle of the Pacific before? Not in the middle of the Pacific. Look at this view. It's the first time I've ever been too short to barbecue. <laughs> it doesn't help that the wind's coming towards us. Ooh, smoky Joe. Okay, we also like to do some workouts every now and then. This will be our sixth workout in 19 days. So, a little bit less than we anticipated. But uh, it's our final day on the water. Let's go. So we're gonna do five cycles, four sets. Four sets. Let's go. Don't look too enthusiastic. <laughs> <laughs> It's almost the day's activities over. One more thing to do. On this boat, at sunset, we have one beer. And we watch the sun go down, and we sit together, play some music, and finish the day as a family. No better time than sunset. This is our last one. This is our last sunset together, guys. It's been 19 days. What a, what a team this has become. Everyone's just... It's hard to put into words how grateful I am to do this trip with these people. Britt, Britt gave me these double swallow tattoos. She's gonna be kick out of me pretending to be Colin, so she gave me a tank top, his dirty shorts. Apparently I'm gonna be Colin for this last and final sundowner. Boom, double swallows, baby. Cheers. 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 He's got his shorts on. My stunt double. I don't have this though. Let's make that clear. I'm gonna get that removed. I'm gonna get that removed. <laughs> Lean on me when you're strong. 
I'll be your friend. I'll help you carry on for it won't be long till I'm gonna need somebody to lean on. On the brother, when you need a hand, we all need somebody to lean on. Well, I just might have a problem that you'll understand. We all need somebody to lean on, lean on me. When, when you're not strong, I'll be your friend. I'll help you carry on for it won't be long. So I'm gonna need somebody to lean on. Morning guys, it's 6 a.m. and we are pretty much there. I don't want to count my chickens before they've hatched, but the sun is about to rise. We can see the shape of Fatu Weaver right there, right beside the boat. Holy shit. Chosen, it's happening. It is happening. It's happening. It smells different here. Lin Lindo's nose is just up in the air he's picking up all these different scents he all these smell oh look at him all these smell in the last three weeks is uh ocean as the crew started to come up one by one to the unbelievably breathtaking sight of fatuiva the first of the marquesas islands in french Polynesia, the usually chatty crew all sat in complete silence the huge mountain seemed to explode out of the ocean and it was a shock to see land after so long at sea. We were literally lost for words. Can sunrise. Fuck. <laughs> this is insane. One of the most gorgeous things I've ever seen. It brought tears to my eyes. <laughs> this is the reason why we want to sail. This is it. It's moments like these. I mean, you got, you got a passage that's like so long, but this makes everything worth it. It's going to be incredible. It's been three to four years coming. It's been a hard journey to get here, but now it's here. And this is what it was all about from the start. Breathe in, breathe out. thought about this exact moment for years and we've just had blow after blow knocking us back and yeah my hands are like shaking like it's just to have it be real right now is overwhelming but you guys all of you 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 trusted me and you trusted the boat and you trusted yourselves and you came and this trip would not have been the same without any one of you guys. I'm just so, so grateful to be sharing it with all of you, with this group of people. We could have, we could have chosen a lot of people to do this with us, but this group here is fucking unbelievable. And when we get there, when that anchor, as soon as that anchor bites, I want you to give the person next to you a fucking huge hug because they helped keep you safe. Every single person here helped bring this boat to this spot. Would not have been the same without any one of you. I hope you guys never, never, never forget what you guys have done as well. You guys have crossed the fucking biggest ocean in the world. It's a, it's an incredible thing. It's the Mount Everest of, of long passages and you guys did it you took a gamble and you fucking nailed it you know lives have been lost out there the most isolated place you can be on the planet and you've done it 
Look at this place. <laughs> Can't wait to step foot on land. Not only is this a monumental occasion for the history of Pale Revival, it was also one of the most profound moments of my entire life so far. <sighs> Those of you who have been following from the beginning will know that on multiple occasions, Pale seemed destined for absolute failure. It was as though the universe was against me, time and time again. A devastating hurricane, two lightning strikes, broken bulkheads. Giving up would have been the easiest and seemingly most logical solution on more than one occasion. But I had a vision of this exact moment, as though I needed to not only prove to myself, but everyone watching that anything is possible if you put your mind to it. And here we are, 20,000 miles, thousands of hours of hard labor, and five and a half years later, sailing into the shores of one of the most beautiful places on the planet. And I'll never forget this feeling for as long as I live. Colin just said the perfect thing would be for boats leaving right now. And it's actually a catamaran driving straight out towards us. We're about to speak to the catamaran that's going to sail by. It's our first conversation with outsiders in 19 days. It smells like flowers. Oh, it smells amazing. Like, can I have a And now it does. <laughs> Photos of it just don't do it justice. I've never seen anywhere more beautiful. You anchored in a good spot? Yeah, I put my anchor down in less than 10 meters, 9 meters. That was good holding. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Nailed it. We just had a conversation. <laughs> We haven't talked to anybody else for, for three weeks. This is the first conversation that we had was with that guy. It was ironic that we had overcome the single longest sailing passage known to man, traveled weeks on end through squall after squall, and were now met with an unexpected challenge at the finish line, finding a place to anchor. Fatu Eva's seabed slopes into the abyss on the same gradient as its steep mountains, so getting somewhere shallow enough to anchor was apparently very difficult. <sighs> I wasn't expecting this many boats. Okay guys, it's 8 a.m. and we made it! Yeah. Yeah. Woo. <laughs> Woo. Oh, love you guys. Well done Brittany. Oh, yeah. we made it! We made it! We made it! We made it! Oh, kitchen guys, dude. Colleen. Cheers, everyone. Cheers! 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 So here are some final stats of our Pacific crossing to the Marquesas Islands. The total time from Puerto Vallarta in Mexico was 19 days and 10 hours to sail 2,855 nautical miles to give us an average speed of 6.12 knots. Remember my goal of wanting to sail the entire way without motoring? Well, we came close, with having to motor for only four and a half hours which meant we only burnt 13 litres of diesel for the entire trip. Pretty incredible to think that we motored more to get across the Panama Canal than we did to cross the Pacific Ocean. I had a friendly competition going with Brian from SV Delos to see who could do it the fastest, which we actually ended up winning by a few hours, but he only motored a mind-blowing 90 minutes for his whole passage. The highest distance we traveled in 24 hours was 173 nautical miles. We consumed 1,300 liters of fresh water and only ran the water maker for eight hours. We caught more fish than we needed, so we only fished about two thirds of the time. We crossed two and a half time zones and each did a whopping 59 watches. The only boat casualties were one spinnaker and one solar panel. Despite going through a rough patch of squalls for days on end, in terms of Pacific crossings, ours was one of the smoothest you'll ever hear of. Some might say we got lucky. Others will say that the years of work that went into the boat and the amount of planning and prep that we did all leading up to the crossing had finally paid off. Whatever the reason, 
We were ecstatic to be here, and we can't wait to show you guys this part of the world. Thanks for watching everyone, and we'll see you next Sunday.